To summarize how we graph position, velocity, and acceleration of an object that starts at rest, like a subway train, accelerates for the first 60 seconds at 0.5 meters per second squared, then maintains that speed for 240 seconds, and then slows down the next 30 seconds from 30 meters per second back down to 0 meter per second with an acceleration of minus 1 meter per second squared. And so here are the three graphs. The first graph is position versus time. There's a parabolic curve right here because the equation of kinematics, when you think about it, that says x is equal to x sub naught plus v sub naught times t plus 1 half a t squared. Notice this term shows that position is a function of time squared, and so as it's increasing in speed, you can see that you have this parabolic shape. Then it maintains that, that um, slope because velocity is not changing. And then at the end, it slows down, and then you have a parabolic shape until, of course, then after that, if time would go on and the train sits in the station, you can, then can imagine that the, that the curve would then be flat again. How do we know that? Because the slope in this case represents the change in position over time, which represents velocity. The area underneath this curve has no meaning. All right. Notice as the slope increases, velocity increases. As the slope maintains the same, it's constant here. That means velocity is constant. Here the slope is decreasing. Velocity changes back to zero. On the second curve, we have velocity versus time. The slope here represents the change in velocity over time, which by definition is acceleration. So here you can see you have a positive slope, positive acceleration, zero slope, no acceleration, negative slope, negative acceleration. The area near the curve represents distance traveled. Notice the area underneath here represents the distance traveled in the first 60 seconds. So this quantity right there is determined by the area in this rectangle. Then the area traveled during the 240 seconds where the speed doesn't change, that rectangle right here, the 240 seconds times 30 meters per second represents the distance traveled during the this time period. So that represents this distance right here. So we add the first area plus the second area and we get up to this number right there. And then finally this area right here represents the distance traveled while it's slowing down. And so we can see that if we take this curve over here, this distance right here or this amount right here represents the area of that curve right there. So there you see the relationship. Finally, acceleration versus time. The slope represents the change in acceleration over time, which is simply the derivative of acceleration, how fast is acceleration changing. Notice that the slope here is zero, the slope is zero, the slope is zero here, meaning the acceleration doesn't change, it's constant in those three instances. All right, the area underneath the curve represents the velocity traveled. So as time goes by and there's more and more area underneath the curve, you're going faster and faster and faster. Now you can see there's no more area right there. That means the velocity is not changing. Here the area is negative. That means the velocity is decreasing. You're losing velocity. By the time you get back to this point, this negative area uh, cancels out this positive area right here and the velocity is back to zero. So the area represents velocity, the slope represents the change in acceleration over time for an acceleration versus time graph. And that's what the graphs look like, x versus t, v versus t, acceleration versus t for a subway train traveling from one station to another, first speeding up and then slowing down. And that's how you do that.